So as you've seen previously in my videos, when I'm actually towing the Millard Caravan, the back sags probably 40 mil, 50 mil, and I needed to do something about that. And today's video is about that. It's about replacing the rear springs. So what I have here are King Springs. Uh, fairly heavy duty, not the heaviest duty, but fairly heavy duty. And that should, the 50 mil lift, and between the 50 mil lift and the fact they're a heavy duty, that should um, hopefully have the compromise. It's still a fairly decent um, ride, but also when putting up the caravan and extra weight and so on, I'm not going to have the sagging ass. So what I need to do here in order to do the job is obviously once I've lifted uh, the axle and removed the tyre, I'll then need to support the chassis and then once I've done that I'll need to undo the bottom nuts of the shock absorber and once I've done that then I have to push the axle down until the point that I can actually remove this um, spring. Obviously the, there's this spring retainers here and those spring retainers will also have to be removed I've done this a couple of times in previous um, uh, my previous disco and Range Rover, so the, the task is fairly fairly simple. It's just a little bit time consuming because of all the kind of jacking up, putting jacks under, and things like that. But I'll take you through the process now. So I obviously, do the things like chuck the tires. I've got two jacks supporting underneath because obviously, remember once we remove the the tire we need to drop the axle so we're not going to be supporting we're not going to be supporting the vehicle by the axle here that's the whole purpose so anyway do that and then of course now we've got that secured we can go ahead and do this and whether it's turning to crap of course I'm trying to do these things but I'll go ahead and take this off now and then I'll get to the next stage wheels off the next thing to do is to take these two bolts off that retain the spring and obviously we need to, as I said earlier on, remove the shock absorber bolts. Once we've done that, we'll then release the, the jack here to drop this axle as far as we can and hopefully this sway bar won't um, cause us any grief. What you might have to do is, when you're undoing this one initially, you may need to hold the, the actual shock body, the shock absorber body, so you're not um, spinning the entire unit. But anyway, you can see that that's doing that. Alright, so by undoing this, the travel of the, of the axle won't be constrained by the length of the shock. So that's the idea here. This, this thing here actually needs to be removed. But anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about that now. So now for these, these two up here. Right, taking out the last one. Let's see if I can get a good view for you. So remove the nuts underneath. Um, so that's the actual retaining plate. Here some washes as well. Right. So, just a recap. Taking out that retainer, holding this, holding this spring in place. We've taken out the shock nuts. So theoretically now we should be able to lower the entire axle using the jack slowly. I've got my two stands in position. Just want to make sure that the jacks and stuff aren't moving. Okay, that's it. And so the shock should be going through. Keep going. No. So as the shock popped out, 
Well, the car's been it's in place, and I've got the gear on. It's in gear. Yeah, it's in gear. It's always a bit nerve-wracking. Right. A little bit more. Can we go any further? It's free. It's free. Okay. So I reckon what's happening? It's the um, sway bar that is holding it in in place. So we can't get we can't get this foot too far down because the this is getting in the way, stopping the movement further down. So we're going to use spring compressors to finish it off rather than trying to take take that out oh. right so we've tampered these up theoretically we should be able to get this down and Nothing out. Uh, close just a tad more no. oh no no got it and of course uh, no well, they're both two inch lift okay that's the bottom Yep, the top. using the clamps. Now I'm going to undo these and put these clamps on this one because you can see how much I need to clamp it down by, or at least attempt to clamp it down by that much. Be interesting. What right, spring difference? Bugger all in height, probably 10 mil if that. But you can see. That this has got the progressive progressive springs here whilst this one is just linear so it should give a softer ride initially but then for tying it's it's going to take up the rest of the strength so um, not sure if you can quite see but there's also quite a substantial difference in coil width to give you an indication on the difference between the two in terms of um, capacity, weight capacity. Right, now I need to put these on here and compress these down. Okay, now just remembering that there is a left and a right side. So this is the left side or the passenger side. Now what I need to do is position that up there which is hard to do with um, one hand but effectively just to show you it's just a matter of putting that up there and and once I've got that there then I'll be able to release the springs so this is how it's going to be positioned except I've still got these two to go so I need to slip that up in here because the bottom one as well needs to be put in place it's a bit of a struggle there's a lot of pressure on these things all right so we've got the rubber grommet in there i've compressed it enough now to be able to clear it so now I'm just going to make sure that Sorry about the shaky camera work. There we go. Always interesting when you're doing this on your own. Right. Right. Let's have a look. And that's how we go. So we actually did compress it quite well, almost forgot that. So that'll need to come in there. And I'll have to find a position for it. You can move the springs around until, you know, you might say, okay, I want it in that position there. So what we'll do is you then move the springs around in order to suit where this plate will be best fit. Uh, the only issue I have is um, I don't like to put it too far. I'll show you here, too far on the end because I don't want this spring to bind on it so this would need to be twisted around quite a bit but the issue now I have is that I'm constrained 
by these. So I might have to actually undo these and then try to spin the, the spring around. Oh, spring clamps are off. Now just taking these off because, like I said to you beforehand, what I need to do is... Oh, here we go. Position this in the best way possible. And that's where we might need the washers underneath there. That's fine, we can use that. Screw those now. I can go one and two. Of course, I've lost the other one. I'll find it but you, you get the idea and that's going to go like so here I go with my one let's get this other one here organized and right, next steps are basically reversal of before so we will put these bolts in place now and always double check things well I should anyway so it looks pretty good there and that's pretty good there and yes I did check to make sure that this was the left side so I'll go ahead and, and just zip these two up. Those are now secured in place. I've jacked up the, the axle again and you can see here that I've got access to putting these in now. So um, just need to do this. I'm um, sorry about the camera work, but you get the idea. Just got to put these back in. And back, once they're back in, we can... So what I'll do is I'll, I won't film the entire process again because I don't think you need to kind of see the a duplicate effort uh, but I'll show you the end result between the initial um, lift and this lift. Joe has been completed. That is definitely a a major even though the springs were only about 10 mil in difference the fact that there's no sag means that it's retained it's almost its entire height so it's looking really good standing next to the disc I can tell that it's actually quite lifted and here we are Well, it took a couple of hours I'm mucking around but anyway hopefully now that this will be the end of the dragging ass problem it's actually got a nice stance to it as well I always like the look of the back a little bit higher than the front so anyway another job done and as always thanks for watching